So today is the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, if you don't know, uh, 50 years ago, he was shot and killed while standing on a balcony outside the Lorraine Motel in Memphis. He had traveled to Memphis for a sanitation worker strike. Um, you know, it's interesting because they didn't they didn't uh, kill they didn't kill uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, when he they didn't kill Martin Luther King Jr. when they when he was asking for freedom. They killed Martin Luther King Jr. when he was asking for economic uh, opportunity for African Americans, when he was threatening the bottom line. That's when they killed Martin Luther King Jr., when he started organizing strikes for sanitation workers and other types of workers. So Martin Luther King Jr. was um, killed 50 years ago, essentially, when he started making powerful people worry about their money. That was it. So essentially, essentially, this has happened in history when, pow when activists or leaders start threatening the powerful and the elites and the oligarchies money. Ooh, that oligarchy gets mad. That's right. James Michael Sarvis just said it. He started talking about class. He started talking about class. And when the bourgeoisie or when the plutocrats, when the oligarchy have their money threatened, have their yachts threatened, oh, you better believe they will act. And Martin Luther King was assassinated. Um, I actually uh, covered while I was at the Young Turks last year, the Selma Bridge Crossing, which was a very powerful moment for me. Um, obviously I'm a white dude, so I can't pretend to totally understand what African-Americans deal with in this, in this country. Uh, I've never been racially profiled. I had it pretty easy as, as a Jewish kid from Long Island. Uh, you know, we all have our issues growing up, but I wasn't profiled and, you know, I didn't really want for much. So that's why as much as I want to show you uh, what's going on around the country, that's why I cover stories in Flint and East Chicago and the police brutality protests in St. Louis. As important as it is for me to show it to you, I'm learning as I go too. And I'm experiencing new things and I'm meeting new types of people that I didn't grow up with. So it's, a, it's an experience for me too. But I thought it was interesting today to bring you a story about uh, history, history for an African-American on a local level. Certainly, I'm not comparing this gentleman I'm about to show you to Martin Luther King Jr. However, uh, I did a story yesterday. The video is now up. There was a gentleman named Jason Wilson. He's an African-American from St. Louis. Um, he was running uh, in the city of Clayton for school board. Uh, he would be the first school board uh, Af he would be the first African-American to ever reach the Clayton City, the Clayton City School Board. Uh, he was running, his mother uh, was an educator for 41 years. He wants to add to diversity in the school district. Clayton is a city that's predominantly white, predominantly upper middle class and wealthy. And he was running to become the first African-American uh, ever elected to the school board there. And he was racially profiled, not once, but twice while canvassing while canvassing, so knocking on doors, as thousands of candidates are doing this year, knocking on doors, passing out pamphlets, introducing yourself to the voters, he was profiled twice. Uh, the police officer actually asked him, uh, what are you, selling umbrellas here? So I interviewed him yesterday. That video is up on the channel, but I followed up with him this morning. I followed up with him this morning to find out if he won. This is Jason Wilson, who ran for school board in Clayton, a city pretty much on the on the outskirts of St. Louis. Uh, let's hear whether he won. Hey, it's Jordan with Jordan, and I'm here with uh, Jason Wilson. He and I spoke yesterday. It was election day in Clayton uh, for school board. Uh, we talked about his experience canvassing. Uh, he was stopped twice uh, while canvassing in a predominantly white neighborhood uh, to try and become a, a school board member there in Clayton. And uh, the results are in. Uh, tell us, Jason, uh, were you victorious uh, in your quest for school board? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Jordan, we we, uh, we won. We won the uh, the election yesterday. Um, the score was a, a little bit lopsided. However, the uh, two candidates that were that myself and Amy Rubin uh, were very close in terms of uh, votes, and uh, and Gennaro Centeno. Who was the previous incumbent? Uh, he lost. So yeah, it was it was good, man. <laughs> it, was, it was a good process. So 
just so I have it straight, uh, Clayton, it's Clayton County, correct? Yeah, actually, so it's, it's really uh, St. Louis County, and Clayton is a, a municipality in, in um, hold on one second, man, in Clayton, hold on, in, in, in St. Louis County, hold on, real fast, talk about something better. Sure. Sure. There we go. Yeah, sorry about that, man. No problem. We'll get it together. There we go. Yeah, yeah. man. So um, I'm just gonna start over real quick. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, it's Jordan. I'm here with Jason Wilson. Uh, he was a c- candidate for Clayton uh, School Board. We spoke yesterday. You had some uh, pretty troubling experiences just trying to canvass for votes. Uh, getting stopped by uh, police officers while you were canvassing in a, in a predominantly white neighborhood. Uh, that interview was already up on the YouTube channel, but I wanted to follow up with you. Yesterday was election day. You were vying to become the first African-American ever elected to the school board there. Uh, what, was the, what were the results? Yeah, man, we won. We won big. We, uh, we uh, got 1,432 votes. I think um, uh, Amy Roman had sixteen hundred. With one or something like that, and uh, the other candidate, um, he, he was a distant third, third place, so he had like seven hundred something votes. But uh, yeah, I was victorious, and I'm excited about it, man. So just so we just so we know, because uh, St. Louis is confusing. There's St. Louis City. There's St. Louis County. Uh, Clayton County is part of St. Louis County, or how, how does that work? Yeah, so uh, Clayton is a part of St. Louis County. And Clayton is a city in, in uh, a municipality in um, in St. Louis County. Mm-hmm. So it's its own city, and it has its own and it has its own mayor. And um, yeah, man. So it, you know, it has its own economics, everything, man. So yeah, yeah. That's what that's, that's what it's still. And St. Louis is broken up like that. It's like you have this large city. Uh, St. Louis City, you know, space, uh, community, urban setting, and then you have the suburb, which is, which is the county, St. Louis County. And I think you know about you know about St. Louis County because you were in Ferguson. That's a county space. Um, Clayton and uh, Clayton and Ferguson are, are vastly different, uh, as you know. Ferguson is on the north side of, of the county and has a small, very small, dense pocket of African Americans that live there. Uh, where Clayton doesn't have um, the density, it doesn't have any really, it doesn't have an area like uh, Ferguson does, where they don't uh, African Americans who live there like that uh, in, in this community. So much, much different, wealthy, wealthy community, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just a lot different, and a lot of challenges come, come because of that. So let me ask you, not that I want to, you know, make you uncomfortable. I'm not comparing yeah. you to Martin Luther King, but today is. The 50th anniversary of his assassination, and yeah. there's commemorations going on uh, in Memphis, other areas. So obviously, you made news because you were, in my view, kind of profiled, just trying to canvas, knock on doors. Police stopped you. Uh, we talked about that yesterday. Uh, but this is kind of a big deal. I mean, you basically you became the first African American elected to the school board in a predominantly white area. Uh, not just white, but I would say middle class, upper middle class. Uh, what what do you think went into your victory? Because as Bernie says, it starts on the local level, uh, and these races do matter, even as low as the school board. So, w- what do you attribute to your victory? Well, I think a couple of things, man. I think one, we stay on message, and yeah. So I led with my platform, which was diversity, and, and as you know, leading with diversity. Everybody gets caught up on the, on the word diversity. Um, you know, I think I want to say that the, the real right wing, far right, have commandeered that and made that into a negative term. Um, but I mean, there, there are folks in Clayton who are, who are liberal who want to see who want to see uh, diversification in the schools. And I think that's what really uh, you know won out here. People want to see diversity. They want to see their kids prepare for the global community. They want to make sure that their kids are see leadership of all different ethnicities and uh, uh, cultures, so that they have they have, they have an understanding of what it's going to look like when they're, when they're out there in the real world. So 
I think that's number one. Number two, I think because I own a company here in Clayton, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out here. And, um, like people know of me. Um, I think that kind of helped out too. There's a familiar familiarity with, with who I am. And uh, then it's all the little small stuff like, you know, I went to Wash U. I have a lot of friends that live in the community also. So all of that plays a part in, in, in getting this victory. But I think the main thing is, is staying to it, staying to the, uh, the platform, and, uh, and being genuine in the process. I think people saw that, put all that together, and here we are with the victory, man. So I want to ask you because – you know, obviously, I'm not from St. Louis. I was there for like two weeks covering protests. I, I had a nice uh, vacation in, in jail <laughs> for 17 hours. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. certainly didn't treat me as bad as I saw them treat uh, the black people with me. Uh, right. But a lot of the African-Americans in my cell, some of the sources that I've gotten to know, I mean, they talk about St. Louis like this is like Selma, modern day. They talk about St. Louis. Some of them said there's straight up segregation here. Uh, it might not be literal, but I mean, certain biz, uh, certain areas of town, businesses don't really hire African Americans. Black people right. uh, scared or don't even bother driving in certain areas because they know they're going to get pulled over. Uh, all that in the backdrop of uh, uh, a district where you're talking about you wanted to get on that board so you could help foster in uh, more diversity. Can you kind of talk about all the challenges that are facing St. Louis County, city, uh, and what you think needs to be done? Well, you know, I think there, you know, I think all the things you just kind of mentioned are true, right? There's this, there's this, this idea of, um, like, people protecting their communities. Uh, and one way to do it is when, when African Americans drive into the community, I mean, you're checking for everything. There's tags, warrants, I mean, everything, everything's being checked. Um, and people get pulled over. Um, and uh, I think those, the, the fodder around that also makes it um, complicated and makes us make people under nervous. And, and whether it's true or not, the fodder is even bigger than the truth, right? So um, that kind of slows people down from wanting to come to the community. Um, you know, I, I myself don't have to go in certain areas for sure because I know I might get pulled over. And not that I have a warrant, not that I have my tags out or my cars you know, won't pass the test. It's just more so, you don't want that hassle, man. You, you just don't want to be in a position where, you know, you're, um, uh, you know, you're sitting in that position. But St. Louis has a lot of challenges like that at the end of the day. Um, always kind of been like that. It's hard to get loans here. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm an African-American business owner, man, and in order for me to really keep up with these other coffee companies, you got to have you got to have cash flow, and you got to have a, a, a good relationship with the bank or have access to folks who have capital or just have access to capital yourself. I don't have a lot of any of that. And so it's, it's, it's very difficult for uh, to get loans. And uh, in the process of all that, you get beat up, you get hammered on your credit, and you start to become late because you're trying to, you know, eat out a victory or become, stay, you know, stay in the game so you can get the success that you're looking for. And uh, but along the way, you get you know bruised up because you don't have all the, the necessary uh, resources you need to be successful in this area. So St. Louis has a lot of challenges like that. I mean, I'm not sure if it's more than any other community. You know, I used to live in Houston. Houston seemed like a pretty liberal and open community. So a lot of folks were getting stuff done there. A progressive society. Here's a lot of the old guard runs the um, run a lot of the, uh, the industry. And, uh, and, uh, and, and the, the, the ideology that they have, the philosophy that they have are passed down sometimes, uh, interwovenly into the, in, in their, in their, in their businesses. And the, and the, and the young folks who are, who are running the business, kind of like, you know, they're not disrupting anything. Uh, they don't have, they don't, they don't have a real radical liberalism. So it's status quo just stays the same. So that's kind of, you know, that's kind of how St. Louis is, man. It's a, I think it has a lot of potential. There's a lot of folks that want to see change. As the folks that voted last night, I think they want to see change. Um, or they want to see a, a new narrative. Um, but there's also folks that, you know, just don't want to see it. And they have a lot of money and control and power and, and influence. 
And, you know, it's going to take a lot of work, man. Uh, last question. You know, I'll, I'll bring it back uh, again. Not trying to make you uncomfortable or compare you to Martin Luther King, but it's not, it's not lost on me uh, on today, his 50th anniversary of his assassination. They didn't assassinate him, to, you know, when he was talking about, um, you know, we have a right to get on, you know, front of the bus, things like that. He was talking about economic racism. And that, and that was really, uh, you know, he, I don't I don't want to say he wasn't a target before then, but after he started really uh, getting really, really active about the economic uh, injustice, uh, he, he was a whole new target. Uh, you were just talking about the economic difficulties for African-Americans. So uh, 50 years later, uh, what is your advice as somebody who is just victorious? Because a lot of uh, viewers that I have that might be African-American, uh, I get a sense from them that they just think it's hopeless. The deck is totally stacked against them and it's never going to change for them. Yeah, well, I, I think that's, 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 that's exactly true, man. Um, as a business guy, the one thing I've learned is how to navigate in the uh, gray area, right? That's a, that's a world a world of uncertainty. So I, don't have, I don't have no idea what's going to happen the next day. So there you have it. I cut it off a little early because it's a long interview. But uh, Jason Wilson, he is the first ever African-American elected to the Clayton, to Clayton School Board. Clayton is a city uh, pretty much right on the outskirts of St. Louis County. Um, it is predominantly white, predominantly uh, wealthy. Uh, as somebody who was in St. Louis for a few weeks, obviously I was arrested while at the Young Turks. I could tell you it is a little, little striking uh, when you're there. It does feel like modern day segregation. Uh, African-Americans are not hired in certain areas with predominantly white business owners. Um, African-American men in particular have expressed to me that they essentially can't drive in certain areas because they know that they're going to get pulled over. Broken taillight, uh, you know, basically white officers pulling them over because you're not, you know, saying, what are you doing in this neck of the woods? And a lot of those uh, African-Americans are then thrown in jail and have excessive, excessive bails set. They can't pay the bail. And then they get put in jail for sometimes for a year to two years to pay off through work. They have to work to pay off that bail. So I, I can't, I'll never forget as I was getting out of jail that uh, next afternoon, I was in jail, I think for like 16 hours. I saw uh, four or five African-American men in orange jumpsuits chained to each other, their legs chained. Uh, I guess they were prison inmates. Uh, and it literally looked to me like modern day slavery. Uh, and that's going on right there in St. Louis County Jail, uh, which is where Clayton is. So the fact that this man, uh, he won 37% of the vote. Uh, he was elected to the school board. He uh, had white people on his campaign. He was, can while canvassing, twice, police approached him asking, what are you doing? Because why is a black man in this neck of the woods? The government in Missouri, hella racist. I like to borrow hella from my former cameraman, Ty. Hella racist. So 50 years after Martin Luther King's assassination, let's not pretend that there's equality in this country. There certainly isn't, not even close. Let's not pretend that the police are racist against African-Americans. It shows in all of their actions, from the police brutality and the murder of African-Americans to the uh, stops, pulling over African-Americans more than white people. I mean, they weren't, police weren't gonna approach me if I was canvassing, what are you doing in this neck of the woods? But you gotta take the small victories where you can get it. And Jason Wilson, just became the first African-American to ever become a school board member in the, in the city of Clayton. And Bernie Sanders is right. When Bernie Sanders says it starts on the local level all the way up, I believe he's right. You know, school board isn't a sexy office, you know, it's not like winning president or becoming a congressman or a senator, but it matters. All these victories matter and it's going to amount, it's going to amount to overall progressive change in this country.